Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Addict, and I'm a four-time diamond player who has reached the top 1% of the NA ladder playing support in League of Legends. I consider myself one of the best Nami players on the NA server, and therefore, in this video series, I'll be going over everything you need to know about how to play the support champion, Nami. I'll be releasing a new video each month on how to play Nami covering topics such as abilities, items, runes, and playstyle along with other tips and tricks. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any upcoming Nami content. In this video, I'll be going over the early game, mythic, and legendary items you'll want to purchase based on the team compositions in the game. Nami has a variety of build paths that she can pursue, and if you are able to understand which items you want to purchase, I guarantee you will climb to at least platinum and possibly even diamond. Nami's early items are fairly consistent with other enchanters, where she benefits greatly from both health and mana sustain. My first buy is usually Spell Thief Sedge and two pots. These are your standard opening items since Spell Thief can be stacked fairly easily in lane as Nami is a ranged character. Applying her E ability on your lane partner can also help stack the Spell Thief Sedge if they are able to proc the orb. Alternatively, if I'm in a difficult matchup where it is unlikely for me to harass the all-in threat of the enemy support such as Blitzcrank, Leona, or Nautilus, I will opt for a Relic Shield instead. It'll be a lot easier to stack my support item while positioning safely in lane. My next item I will work towards is a pair of boots and a Kindle Gem. In my opinion, health is more important than mana sustain in the early stages of the game since it denies the enemy from getting a lucky all-in on you. If you manage your mana properly, you should be able to simply stack your mana foe band on cooldown and have enough mana throughout laning phase to either poke or sustain through early harass. If I ever have an additional 150 gold on my first back, buying a refillable pot could be useful against heavy poke lanes. Boots provides an extra bit of movement speed to help you get back to lane and potentially roam to mid lane if your roam timings allow for it. From these initial items, you will want to work your way towards building either your first mythic item or tier 2 lucidity boots, depending on how often you will want to roam pre-14 minutes. Lucidity boots is something I purchase nearly 90% of my games. The cooldown reduction is key for Nami so that you can continually heal your teammates. However, if you do notice that you are against a full AD team, I will occasionally consider buying a plated steel caps for some additional tankiness. If you do not have mana full band in your runes, or you plan on going locket of the iron solari, make sure to buy a tier of the goddess after your kindle gem. Nami is a fairly mana dependent champion and you will need to supplement your lack of mana if you opt for a tankier item like locket or do not take mana full band for a tankier rune option. I'll be going into more detail about rune choice selection in the next episode. For now though, you can easily sit on tier in your inventory and convert it into a Fimble Winter or Seraph's Embrace later in the game. Next, I'll be going over the 4 main mythic items that you should consider buying when playing Nami. I'll also introduce a secret mythic item that players don't tend to generally buy on Nami but can be super useful in the right situation. The primary mythic item you will want to consider purchasing is Imperial Mandate. It is a cheap and cost effective item that amplifies her teammates damage anytime they are slowed or cc'd. You can slow or cc enemy champions with 3 of your 4 abilities including Bubble, Tidecaller's Blessing, or Tidal Wave. Imperial Mandate provides everything an enchanter wants including ability haste, mana regeneration, and health. It's important to note that this mythic item will not only provide a slight damage buff to your teammates abilities and auto attacks, but will also provide both you and your ally a small movement speed buff every time mandate's passive is procced. Imperial mandate will be your default mythic item to buy for Nami if you are unsure of which direction to go, but there are situationally better mythic items depending on the enemy team composition, which we will explore next. The second mythic item that I occasionally build with Nami is Shirelia's Battle Song. Being able to speed up your entire team with the press of a button feels absolutely amazing, but you do lose out on some damage for your teammates. I generally don't need to buy this item since your ultimate and passive already provides your team with a decent amount of movement speed to engage on the enemy. Instead, I buy Shirelia's in cases where our team needs additional disengage. There are several scenarios where your team will want to escape an enemy from using their game changing ultimate on you, and the only way for you to win the team fights is to wait for the enemy's ultimate to expire before re-engaging. Let me give you a few examples. Example number 1. 
If a Vladimir decides to use his ultimate on your team, your team's best option is to scatter away so that he cannot continually deal damage over time by being near his opponents. Running away from Vladimir is easy when you have a Shirelias and he is easily gankable after the clock runs out on his ultimate. Example number 2. If Fiddlesticks decides to activate Crowstorm on your team, you must disengage from his ultimate and wait for it to expire. Fiddlesticks does not have a great gap closer, so it will be difficult for him to continually drain your team if you are all spread out. You can always re-engage afterwards once you've repositioned with your team. Example number 3. If Lilia decides to put certain carries to sleep, she and the rest of her team will try to follow up on her engage and attack your team. However, since there is a slight delay to falling asleep due to the drowsy mechanic, you can safely retreat to an area on the map and hope Lilia and her teammates can't as easily reach you while you are asleep. After your slumber, you can wake up and re-engage on her. The main concept to understand here is I use Shirelia's battle song primarily as a disengage tool to let an enemy's ultimate expire. Once the ultimate has expired, I can always re-engage with Nami's ultimate. The third mythic item I like to consider buying is Locket of the Iron Solari. This item is useful versus AoE damage carries such as Katarina, Samira, Diana, or Karthus. Being able to block an AoE burst of damage with Locket is super valuable, because generally the enemy champion will be extremely squishy to re-engage once the burst of damage has been negated by your Locket. It provides Nami with tankiness and mitigates neighboring teammates health loss. It is important to note that you will be lacking mana regeneration if you choose to build Locket, even with Manifold Band. So I make up for this by buying an early tier after Kindle Gem. You can build either a Fimble Winter or Seraph's Embrace in late game to turn your tier into a legendary item. Overall, your build path will be slightly delayed due to the tier purchase, but it is well worth it if you can incorporate Locket into your build path. With this build, you are trading damage for extra survivability. Sometimes, the best way to win a teamfight is to survive an initial burst, rather than immediately outdamaging your opponent. The fourth mythic item that I will occasionally buy is Moonstone Renewer. I usually don't build this item because it is only useful in long and extended teamfights, and for enchanters who have more shielding and healing in their kit. Nami's healing and shielding isn't as frequent compared to typical enchanters such as Sona or Soraka, so the value you get is relatively lower than if you buy your default mythic item, Imperial Mandate. However, in extended teamfights versus tanks, you can consider purchasing Moonstone Renewer if you truly believe you will be healing in teamfights for an extended period of time. Lastly, the secret mythic item that you can buy is none other than Everfrost. This alternative mythic item is especially useful against a fed enemy champion that can only be stopped with hard CC. One of Nami's disadvantages is that her CC isn't 100% reliable like a Leona stun. Both Bubble and her ultimate can be dodged fairly easily. This means if a fed Master Yi tries to alpha strike you, there's not too much counterplay. However, by adding an additional form of hard CC in your kit with the Everfrost active, it will be very difficult for even the most fed Master Yi to dodge a Bubble, Tidal Wife, and the Everfrost route. Similarly, you can use the Everfrost active to break Nocturne's Spell Shield, which can then be followed up with a Tidal Wave and Bubble for the disengage. Additionally, what's neat about the Everfrost route, unlike your Bubble and Ultimate, is that it actually bypasses Yasuo's Windwall. I would only buy Everfrost in these fringe situations where additional CC is paramount since the item is slightly more expensive than your typical mythic item and only has limited use as a counter engage tool versus annoying divers. Let's now talk about the handful of legendary items you can decide on purchasing when playing Nami. It will heavily depend on the enemy composition so think critically about how to spend your gold most wisely. The primary legendary item you will want to buy is Chemtech Putrefire. Despite the overall nerf to healing, I still believe buying a Chemtech Putrefire is rarely a poor item choice. The extra mana regen is also useful to have in order to continually buff your allies' health bars. In most of my games, there are usually at least two enemy champions that provide significant healing, and the only way to stop them from sustaining back to full health is through the use of Heal Cut. Significant healing include enemy team comps with solo laners such as Vladimir, Swain, or Aatrox. I'd even consider buying this legendary item before completing your mythic item, 
if the healing on the enemy's support is unbearable. That would include enemy enchanters acting as the team's dedicated healer, such as Yumi, Soraka, or Sona. Chemtech Putrefire directly counters champions who prioritize Moonstone Renewer. However, on the rare occasion you notice the enemy team comp has little to no significant healing, feel free to skip this legendary item. The next legendary item you can consider buying is Mikhail's Blessing. This item provides you with magic resistance which can be super useful versus a fed AP carry. It also provides you with the ability to cleanse most forms of CC from your carry while also providing them with some instant health in tricky teamfights. I'd want to buy this versus enemy team comps that have guaranteed or almost guaranteed forms of CC which last a significant duration such as Luxbind, Morgana Bind, Leona Stun, Ash Arrow, Vague Arcade, or a Twisted Fate Gold card. The third legendary item I would consider purchasing is Redemption. Redemption is an easy to use active which can be used even after you have died. It provides an amazing AoE heal in a large area so that you and your teammates can sustain through messy teamfights. It also damages any enemies within the circle of effect based on their maximum health. I have won games off a well placed redemption as the health disparity will be quite surprising in teamfights. This item provides both ability haste and health which in my opinion are two very important stats for enchanters like Nami. Other situational legendary items you can consider purchasing are Staff of Flowing Water for AP casters and Ardent Sensor for AD auto attackers. I'll only buy these items if the champions I'm buffing are part of my win condition. For example, if I have a super fed Jinx who will benefit greatly from additional attack speed, Ardent Sensor will be a must buy. Occasionally, you can consider buying an armor item versus all attack damage teams. I personally like building a Frozen Heart on Nami as it provides her with mana, cooldown reduction, and a ton of armor at an extremely efficient price. If you decided you wanted to go the locket of the Iron Solari build path and you already have a fully stacked tier, converting it into a Fimble Winter isn't a bad choice to become an even more tankier version of Nami. Having that larger amount of health makes it considerably more difficult for AoE burst champions to 100 to 0 you. If you survive the burst, you avoid the worst. However, if you think you are starting to stack a bit too much health, then Seraph's Embrace is a viable option as well. The additional AP this item provides makes your healing significantly stronger, and as long as you don't get one shot by an assassin, this item will prove to be highly effective due to your constant strong heals. Lastly, because Nami is a support champion, one of your primary goals will be vision control. It's important that you maintain vision control throughout the game. For your last item, you will generally want to buy a Vigilant Wardstone at around level 13. This item is super efficient and counts as a legendary item to help enhance your stats with your mythic item. Keep buying pink wards and elixirs in late game until you have saved up 1100 gold for Vigilant Wardstone. I would even consider buying this item earlier than your last legendary item if you have a scary invisibility champion like Evelyn, Twitch, or Shaco on the enemy team. Keeping track of where these sneaky enemies are can be more important than any extra damage or healing you can provide with your typical legendary item purchases. To summarize, here are some example item sets that I like to build when playing Nami. Alright, that's basically everything you need to know about Nami's items. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new about Nami, please let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe to this channel for more Nami content. You can also ask me any other questions about Nami when I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash addictdate on Fridays and Sundays at 8pm Eastern. See you later! Untouchable. Hey, it's a miracle. 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 Untouchable. Hey, it's a mirac